Welcome to The Popish Plot. I'm Nate. I'm Jessica. And I'm Mike. Today, we are here to talk about a fantastic saint. Chris Nate, is it fantastic an impressive enough word? You know, it's not. But we should introduce her first. But Fair we, enough. So, we are going to be discussing Christina the Astonishing. <laughs> I, I had never heard of Christina the Astonishing <laughs> until Jess mentioned her a few episodes back. And I'll tell you... I have never heard a greater title. I know, right? <laughs> never heard a better epithet. No. So her her name from birth was actually Christina Mirabilis. Uh, she was born in 1224 in Bristol. No, no. Nope. no sorry. She, uh, she, she, was, she died in 1224. She was born. She was born into eternal life she in 1224. Was, she was born around 1150. And circa. then she died around 1171. And then she died for real on July 24th, 1228. Four. What? Wait, hold on. Died for real. Well, well, there's some discussion about whether she died or whether she was essentially in a coma. But that, we get into that. Okay. Uh, she is from an area that is now part of Belgium. The Low Countries. Yes. Hmm. At the time, she was from the County of Loon. <laughs> Jazz Loon? I don't think so. I don't think so. No. Oh. Uh, she's a patron of Miller's. People with mental disorders, mental health workers, in her feast day, it's July 24th. Uh, she's been recognized as a saint since the 12th century, but she was never officially canonized. Mm -hmm. It was right in that, you know, few, first few hundred years where it was a new thing, so she could have been officially canonized, but she wasn't. But, like, in her lifetime, people are like, a She's saint. astonishing! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Listen, if, if, her, if her name was Christina the All Right... Mm -hmm. Christina the Vaguely Impressing. Then I'd be like, well, hang on. Let's have a more formal process. How about, how about, how about how, where do you sit with Christina the Pretty Good? Purgatory. Mm. <laughs> but come on, this woman is Christina the Astonishing. Clearly a saint. Mm -hmm. What was her life like? Well, she was the youngest of three First daughters. or second life. She was orphaned at around the age of 15 and oh. then worked as a shepherdess for a hey. while. Uh, she had really bad seizures. Oh. Um, I've read some things that suggest she was always sickly, and that one was one where they kind of did a bit of creative license, so I don't know if entirely that was the case. But anyway, in her like late teens, early 20s, incredibly sickly. Huh. At around the age of 21, she had one so bad that she either died mm -hmm. yeah, or yeah. she appeared to be dead. And I don't mean like she appeared to be dead and everyone started crying and she came back too. No, no, no. Luckily, they had open coffin funerals. Because she made it to the church. She, they were saying mass. By the time they got to the Lamb of God, she was back. <laughs> so it wasn't even like at the opening reading. So one, of those, so, one of those everybody's, so one of those everybody's just being very prayerful in church, and then all of a sudden this woman in the box up in the middle just suddenly goes, <gasps> You know what that is? That's astonishing. Yeah. So, uh... She believed she was dead because yep. she had a vision of heaven, hell, and purgatory Ooh. and was offered <clears throat> the ability to stay in heaven or she could return to earth and do penances for the souls in purgatory. And because what she's, a champ. she's saintly, she took one for the team. Mm -hmm. So she, she stands up, up, like, bolt upright in her coffin yeah. in the middle of mass. <laughs> she then levitates up to the rafters <laughs> because she can't stand the stink of of sin on all the people going to her funeral. <laughs> this just gets more you and think more that You would think that the smell would rise. You would think so. No, but... not the stink of sin. <laughs> apparently, 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 much like some heavier than air gases, the stink of sin sinks down to the floor. That's exactly it. The, our prayers rise up, our sin sinks down. Oh, yeah. Anyway, she, she refused to get down until the priest went and, you know, commanded her. <laughs> At which point... She, Come she, down from there! No! She, she lands on the altar and then tells them about her vision. <laughs> After that, she, she was known oh. for levitating... I'm so happy right now. ...so often from then on for the same reason, as well as climbing trees, climbing up buildings... Hiding in ovens so she was and hiding woman. in cupboards. Wow. Hiding in ovens. <laughs> well, it's old-timey oven, so it's not like she's in the kitchen. It's back when, you know, the, the baker had, like, a big, you know, clay thing. The whole town used it type level. It was, it was a giant, <laughs> it was like a giant, it was like a, a small-ish fireplace, but yeah. Yeah, the kind of thing you could put Hansel and Gretel in. Yeah. 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 Yes. All, all oh, because she, she didn't like the smell of all the people. 
Um, Again, they stink of sin. Yes, as you expect, she spent a lot of time avoiding people. <laughs> you people stink of sin! <laughs> she, she also immediately started living a life of extreme poverty. Mm -hmm. Like, she mm -hmm. wore rags. Mm -hmm. She didn't have a house. She, like, mm -hmm. slept in the rocks in the woods. <laughs> hey, the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Well, she could have had a place. She voluntarily <laughs> said, I'm not... She has two older siblings that were helping her out before this point. Well, again, if, if, you're, if you're poor just because you're poor, that's very unfortunate. If you're poor for the kingdom, that's laudable. Yes, but that wasn't the, like, extreme thing she did. Oh, okay. like, there, See, there's, she's there's, astonishing, so there's more. So there's, I'm guessing, I'm guessing the extreme comes in the form of the penances that she was doing for the souls in purgatory. And yeah. all the stinking sinners. And all the stinking sinners <laughs> around her. Yes, yes. She did things like throwing herself into a fire or a furnace. <laughs> apparently where she would then stay in it, screaming her head off like she's getting burned alive. <laughs> only to then walk out and be like completely fine. Like even her clothes <laughs> aren't singed. Surprise! <laughs> she, she would let herself get attacked she by really, dogs. She really liked Daniel 3. Uh, she, attacked by dogs. She, she'd run through thorny thickets. She'd hang out in tombs, which is, like, the least astonishing thing in this whole list. <laughs> yeah, that's just goth. She would jump into the river during winter. Ah. Where, and again. Polar bear, nice. Yeah, she, she's from what is now Belgium. It's not like she's down south where it's like, oh, it's a little crispy. No, no, they have real winter then, especially back in the Middle Ages. Yeah. There, there were times when it was, like, ice and yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she would stay there, sometimes hours, sometimes days, sometimes weeks. Or occasionally she'd jump into the river in the summer. She'd let the current take her down. <laughs> down. Wash point, me out to sea. No, no, no. Because there were mills, you know, south of there. Well, you know. Did, did, she, go, did, she, did she ever go through the mill? She, 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 she'd get stuck uh. in the water wheel. <laughs> at, at, at which A normal point, person that would kill. Yes, yes. She'd come out, no broken bones, anything. Uh, eventually she stopped because the millers kept asking her not to do Seriously, that. Seriously, <laughs> you're going to break my mill. <laughs> Uh, many people thought she was a holy woman. Yeah. Uh, some thought she was insane, hence the reason why she's, you know, the patron for mental illnesses in part. Yep. And other people assumed she must be possessed. Well, again, we, we in always, fairness, we always I mean... have to test these things, but... Yes, and they tested this on multiple occasions, because she was went to jail two times... Because government officials assumed she was possessed and they mm -hmm. arrested her for it. So we, we, we mentioned her, I, I believe we mentioned before this show, that apparently she became a Dominican. So 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 far I've, I've heard all of her, you know, so at what point does she decide she needs to go hang out in a monastery? After the second time that she got thrown in jail, she's like, if I'm, you know, part of an order, they won't keep thinking I'm possessed because then it'll be the order's job to make sure I'm not. Mm -hmm. So she joined the Dominicans. She still continued doing extremely crazy seeming things obviously um, well she's astonishing well plus you know, both Catherine of Siena and Rose of Lima who are noted for what are to us today extreme penances were third order Dominicans the Dominicans were down with this yes well you know they anyway sin, sink. sin stinks you gotta do stuff to get rid of the stench anyway although she was still doing all these extreme things um, her superiors made a point to note that she was obedient to them. Mm -hmm. So when they told her mm -hmm. to stop doing a crazy well, thing, she'd when stop. They, when they told her to come down from the rafters, <laughs> yeah, she would. Get out from the rafters. <laughs> come out of you that stove! We need to cook dinner! You cannot throw yourself into any more mill water wheels. <laughs> We're using the mill. It slows down the process. <laughs> and she was obedient. Yes. Um, she was, in her later years, as the second time she died, she was like 74, she was sought out for advice and spiritual aid, including from some people who were later also declared saints, as well as various um, rulers of the area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, see, most of these stories I read like this, it's one of those ones where I'm like, that seems like a lot of pious legends that got, you know, thrown together over time. Astonishing. Astonishing. Astonishingly, her life story was written eight years after her death. This is not the centuries. second death. This is <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the second time. This is not centuries of legend and accretion. This was written right after. Yes, by a writer and a theologian who was also a student of Saint Albert the Great. So I'm sure he's used to you know great saints doing things that seem weird. Mm -hmm. And he actually interviewed witnesses. Mm -hmm. um, and her story was also in part written by a historian and a cardinal who personally knew her. Boom. So again. <laughs> And therefore, it was like, yeah, she'd, she'd go in the fire, she'd scream, she'd yell, she'd be in there like half an hour, and then she'd walk out like nothing happened. <laughs> Astonishing. 
<laughs> I'm a cardinal of the church. I'm not going to say something that is clearly false. Everyone will laugh at me. At least something so easily disproven will fall. <laughs> I've got all these witnesses who are like, no, dude, I was totally there. <laughs> we got the court case where they're like, I think she's possessed. Why? She keeps climbing up buildings like she's Spider-Man. What's a Spider-Man? You'll find I don't out. Know. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. <laughs> anyway, so I think this is the point where we put in the disclaimer that unless God has personally told you to do things like that, don't jump into fires and furnaces and hide in ovens. Yes, <laughs> well, and, no, never do well, it because you think it's a good idea. Only do it if he thinks it's a good idea. Also, also as part of the disclaimer, I would suggest if and some, whether whether currently or at some point in time in the future you believe that God has told you to go do these things, not to suggest that you shouldn't do them, but first, uh, find yourself a uh, spiritual a, a spiritual director, guide, mm -hmm. somebody who can help you actually go and sort through these things. Because there are times we think God is telling us to do something, and it's not God. It's it, it, it's likely us. Mm -hmm. It's it's it's. Or it's our interpretation of the world around us. Or, you know, there is that third option. And another good tip is, if you want to have a career, going into ovens and not being burned, levitating to the rafters. <laughs> Talk to David Copperfield. Well, no, I, I, I would suggest um, die and then rise during your funeral mass. Once you do that, you have a lot more leeway to do whatever you need to do. I mean, it's a bit harder now that most people are either, you know, embalmed or cremated, mm -hmm. but, you know. Mm -hmm. But again, I mean, if I... you're astonishing. Astonishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the embalming really is a tough one. Because if you're not dead before that, you'll totally be dead after that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, go down below and in our comments section. Uh, I don't know. Uh, leave... Uh, something astonishing. I'm, 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 at, a, I'm at a loss. I, I, I really. I, I, I'm sorry. I was just thinking about what if you were the next Christina the Astonishing, and so you're gonna get cremated. So they they throw you in the oven and you just start screaming, <laughs> and they're like pushing all the emergency stops, and you're like, get out, fine. You just What's out? up? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> what, what did Stephen the Amazing say when, when, he, when he walked out? When he walked out of the uh... no, 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 merely amazing. That guy's toast. Oh, okay. <laughs> You've got to be a stash. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, or, or if, if you want, you know, let us know how we're doing. Uh, if you think we did a good job on this, let us know. If you w think we would Ooh. you call this episode? Astonishing. astonishing. <laughs> yes, there's really what we want. Go down below into the comments section and let us know whether you think this episode was astonishing. Or, if you're unsure, maybe they could comment with where you would hide to get rid of, you know, smelling everyone else's sins. Yeah, where, where, where are you going to go to escape the stench of sin that's around that surrounds everybody nearby you? While you're down there, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell next to it so you get notified when new episodes come out. And until next time, remember to live your faith. Love your faith. And share, share that love. love. Astonishing. <laughs>